first ever Tesla Cybertruck crash happened yesterday. And I might look happy, but I'm not. But I am, I'm kind of intrigued by this because everyone wanted to know what would happen when the Cybertruck was involved in a crash. Now we know. We also know it wasn't the Cybertruck driver's fault. In fact, the person driving a Toyota actually smashed into the Cybertruck, veered all the way across the road, right into the path of the Cybertruck. Insane accident. I, I don't know what they were thinking. Maybe they were drunk or something. Anyhow, here are the details. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking, Tesla Cybertruck, new on the roads. This is the first Cybertruck accident that we know of. To be fair, on the driver of the Cybertruck, it most certainly was not their fault in any way, shape or form. The media will probably try and twist this story into saying that the Cybertruck is going to massacre other cars. And to be fair, if you look at the Corolla, the Toyota Corolla that hit the Cybertruck, it was pretty well destroyed. On the other hand, the Cybertruck well, it looked like it maybe brushed against a guardrail or something. Damage was extremely minimal. Very, very interesting to see how the Cybertruck responds to other cars hitting it. At this point, it looks like not a lot happens. This is, as far as we know, the first Cybertruck crash. Images taken of the two vehicles after the crash showed basically the, the Cybertruck stainless steel panels are extremely strong. Does that mean they're dangerous for other vehicles? No, of course, of course not. I mean, to be honest, if you hit, for example, if you veered into the path of a Ford F-150, what do you think would happen to your car? Probably a similar story. Reports of the crash now have some details of this crash. We can see that the Cybertruck has a little bit of damage on the side to the panels and trims. Um, you can see that fortunately they're removable, the actual arches, the kind of like the wheel housing arch, those things are removable, that's been broken, and of course that's not a big deal. You can see the panels there, the side panels of the Cybertruck have been dented in a little bit, and scratched, really, really something where you could drive the car easily for the next 10 years and it wouldn't really matter, but obviously you would assume under insurance these vehicles would be fixed. So some people were already saying that Tesla Autopilot was involved and they're trying to blame the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck was in its own lane. It was in its own lane. So. It doesn't, want to, it doesn't matter what story you want to make up to try and get clicks. That is ridiculous. The Cybertruck was in its own lane. It was doing the speed limit. Um, this was obviously not... It's, it could do nothing to have avoided this crash. Here's what actually happened. On December the 28th, 2023, at 2.05 p.m., Redwood City units were dispatched to a two-vehicle crash on SR35 Skyline Boulevard, south of Page Mill Road, our investigation indicates a Toyota Corolla was traveling south on SR35 southbound south of Page Mill Road at an unknown speed when the driver, for unknown reasons, turned to the right and subsequently struck a dirt embankment on the right shoulder. The Toyota then re-entered the roadway, crossed over the double lines into the northbound lane and crashed into a Tesla Cybertruck traveling north on SR35 southbound. The Tesla driver sustained a minor injury possibly and declined medical transportation. No other injuries were reported. It does not appear the Tesla Cybertruck was being operated in an autonomous mode. The investigation into the incident is ongoing. Now, I don't really understand why whether or not the Tesla Cybertruck was in being driven in autonomous mode is even remotely relevant to this incident. I mean, the guy could have been, in my opinion, could have had his eyes closed. I don't see how this would make any difference. If a car comes at you from the other side of the road and crosses into your lane, you don't have time to react. It's pretty simple. Do you agree? Let me know if you guys agree with that statement. Interestingly, the Cybertruck, as per Tesla Rati, that was involved in the crash, does not seem to be owned by a regular customer. As per the CHP, the pickup truck was being driven by a Tesla engineer based in San Francisco. So someone who was doing some sort of testing on this particular Cybertruck. The vehicle had Texas plates and its registration was listed at Palo Alto. So this is what happens when the Cybertruck is involved in what was actually basically a head-on collision with a Toyota Corolla. Now, as you can see, it wasn't quite a head-on collision because the Corolla hit the side of the Cybertruck, veered across the road. The roads do, do look a bit slippery there in that area. A tiny bit of moisture on the road. I'm going to guess that the guy who was driving the Corolla was just driving way too fast, was out of control. But either way here, as you can see, the damage to the Cybertruck is pretty minimal. Damage to the Corolla is pretty significant. And this is kind of a T-bone incident. You can see the Corolla's hit the side of the Cybertruck, kind of T-boned it in a way. And the Cybertruck's held up really, really well to this incident. 
Crash protection is clearly very good from the side angle for the Cybertruck. Guys, what are your thoughts? Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.